yeah. I love my HBCU. And Bob, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a lot. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Talkin they about. can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a lot. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes, and pay attention, sir. cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bills with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is still on assignment, but we have none other than Charles Bishop. He was actually on assignment this morning getting some <laughs> work for us done. With that being said, we'll lead into what that really looks like, but let me give the proper introduction. Welcome to episode 495. Charles, we're five episodes away from 500. The countdown continues quietly. We snuck in, prolonged it a little bit uh, to give you a little more work in there, Charles, but at the end of the day, it's 500, man, and we'll see what it looks like, retirement for the old dean. We'll see what that means as things continue Particularly, man, I got to find a way to stay with it in baseball, though, man. I got to get some special episodes or something, Charles. You got to, you know, let me sneak in the back door or something. I know some emeritus episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well done. Well done. <clears throat> Welcome to episode 495 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports. For institutions large and small from the NEIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Yada Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Watson and Charles Bishop, filming from our home studios and sending a signal live. Case Waves 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, multi-Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University. Uh, with that being said, Charles, how are you doing today? Doing well, Doc. Uh, we're beyond spring break for, for a lot of us now, and now we're in that back, back end of the uh, semester. Basketball is still with us for now, but we're moving into those spring sports. So uh, looking forward to a busy uh, six to eight weeks here. That said, today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and as well as data analytics. With that being said, Charles, you were in the opening of a golf assimilator, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. uh, give me a little more information about what that looks like this morning at Texas Southern University. I got there for breakfast, but I had to run to another meeting. I'm glad to see that you are able to cover information and uh, let us know what's going on there. Yeah, big things happening at Texas Southern today as they uh, unveiled a new golf simulator, which is huge news uh, in regards to uh, what they're able to do with their golf program. But uh, Texas Southern, one of uh, 10 HBCUs selected for the HBCU Golf Consortium Initiative, which is a, a pilot program uh, under the leadership of Make Golf Your Thing, focusing on the business of golf, research, and agronomy and career pathway. So uh, you had various representatives from PGA, from the LPGA, uh, from the USGA, who are all in attendance today at Texas Southern. Huge event. Uh, President, Provost, uh, of course, uh, Vice President of Collegiate Athletics, uh, Dr. Kevin Granger, uh, all spoke at this event, but it was a huge event for Texas Southern golf today. Good stuff. Well, let's get right into it and play some footage of that event. Probably about six at a time would be coming for you. Hi. Hey. Good. 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 Good.
Vice President of the Collegiate Athletics, uh, Dr. Kevin Granger, uh, here, ribbon cutting for the uh, Texas Southern Golf. What does it mean for uh, the Texas Southern Athletic community to have this uh, new toy, if you will, for Texas Southern Golf? Oh, it means the world for our department and for our student athletes. It gives them the opportunity to come in and work out, whether it's rain, sleet, or shine, or snow. Give them the opportunity to come in and practice and tone in and hone into their craft, their skills. We think we thought it was super important for us to, that Texas Sun. Our goal for about two years has been to upgrade our facilities. And so we've been on that march with our strength and conditioning facility, upgrading this, obviously, and the golf simulation, and then many other projects where we're opening up the athletic uh, uh, transformational center. We had uh, upgrades on the score clock, on the basketball court. So we have a number of projects. Then we get ready to open our new strength and conditioning facility. So we're staying to our mission, staying true to our mission of making sure we upgrade for our student athletes. Uh, the corporate community uh, embrace this uh, opportunity. Uh, what does that mean for Texas Southern Athletics? Well, it means a lot. We couldn't have gotten it done. Let me be clear. We couldn't have gotten it done without the support of the partners and, and forming that partnership. That partnership allowed us to bring this to a reality. We had a vision for it and things of that nature, but obviously when you have partnerships and people behind you uh, that's assisting you, it allows you to get there much quicker. It's huge, man. Um, so blessed to have it. It just helps us to compete, helps us to bond, helps us to have a facility that we can use to um, attract recruits. Um, it's a beautiful thing, and it's you know we're HBCU, and I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of this because it's it's um, it's more than just about golf at this point. It's 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 about the business of golf, and it's about how we can really do in the future. And um, I'm very excited about it. It's it's a, it's a blessing to have it. Uh, what are some of the things, especially with regards to the golf simulator that you're looking forward to, kind of playing with some of the toys? Oh, man, it's, um, as a golfer, it's so exciting. It's, um, you know, a simulator is every, everybody's dream. Um, you know, you have it in your backyard. You have it in, uh, in certain golf courses. But to have it on your, on your campus and have access to it 24 hours a day, like I might be in here at 3 in the morning hitting golf balls. And I feel like that just makes a difference in um, being good and being great. Well, Shankle, uh have the ribbon cutting here for the golf simulator. Talk about what this means for the Texas Southern Golf Program. This is huge. It's an outstanding day. This golf simulator is going to just transform my golf team to the next level. Not just the golf team, but student bodies allowed to come in here, staff. Uh, this is a great move toward excellence in golf, and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. Great turnout here with regards to uh, the ribbon cutting. Uh, what does it mean for the Texas Southern community uh, for uh, them to really embrace Texas Southern I mean, this is the avenue. I mean, it's not just golf. You know, it's a lot of jobs involved in and, uh, golf here, and uh, this is a great place for them to come over and enjoy. And I'm excited about it. It's a big deal. So that was huge today, Dr. Cabello, uh, in terms of what uh, Texas Southern was able to get do uh, done, uh, uh, unveiling this golf simulator, unveiling uh, the, the room where they uh, practice in and things of that nature. So for everybody to kind of come out and, and take a look at uh, some of the new toys that Texas Southern Golf has, huge. And uh, like I said, uh, partnering with the, the business community, if you will, uh, definitely the LPGA, PGA, USGA, uh, it goes a long way in terms of uh, making this golf program uh, a, a, a driving engine, if you will, with regards to Texas Southern Golf.
Did you get to uh, take down your camera, your interview microphone, and get some swings in to test it out? Uh, you know, when everybody kind of cleared out, I did put a little bit in there, have some little, <laughs> have some little breaks in there. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun because Coach Sankle did say it's for students, it's for the golf team, it's for faculty and staff. So I, I listened to all of that. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> He's uh, like, yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> yeah. oh, good stuff. Yeah. With that being said, let's get into some of this news of the day. Uh, it's some good one, good stuff in there. I had a chance to watch the game yesterday. Semifinals, Langston uh, made some big plays, closed out strong, and got it done as they uh, clinch a spot in the NAIA National Championship berth for HBCU Sports, Langston Lions Championship host to live on as they knock off the reigning national champion college of Idaho, 58-52, to 52, to secure, secure their spot in the tournament finale. It's the first time that HBCU uh, uh, has a chance to win a national championship since 1977. Guess who? Texas Southern Tigers. Texas That's Southern Tigers, yeah. <laughs> Way to connect the two, so I thought that's a big deal. Um, obviously, ta um, Talladega played for a championship uh, two years ago uh, with Chris Wright. That's the coach of Langston now. They couldn't quite get it done in 2022 um, in terms of his appearance. So big time. First time, first national championship appearance for Langston. And that game is tonight. It'll be right on right after our show. So as I head home, I'll have it on uh, the phone there to kind of watch it as I'm driving home or at least listening to it, as they say. So that's going to be a big deal. Intriguing to see what goes on there. Anthony Roy, uh, big minutes, 12-34 left uh, foul as he did his three-point attempt, and, and they hit like three consecutive threes uh, to take the lead back, went back and forth. And then that defense that many people have talked about, particular AD, uh, Drew talked about how defensive – was their strength in a lot of ways while people were focused on their ability to score. That defense really stood strong with some big plays down the stretch to put in a position to win that championship. What were your thoughts in terms of that uh, big win in the semifinals last night? I think, I, I think you touched on it. And I, and I think uh, the history part of it, I think that's one of the things that uh, that jumps out at me. Uh, like you mentioned, Tal Talladega had an opportunity to play for it uh, previously. And now Langston gets an opportunity, but reaching back into that history of HBCU basketball, that, that connectivity. Uh, last time, uh, you had a, a winner from HBCUs with Texas Southern back in 1977. Langston has an opportunity to do something really historic and probably as hot a name as any, uh, Chris Wright, uh, in terms of what he's been able to do at Talladega and Langston. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's getting a few phone calls right now uh, in the midst of this championship run. So, you know, we'll, see, <laughs> man, we'll see what the man talks to. He got one more night. Let him one more. Y'all right. always want to play for the next. <laughs> slow down. Slow down. That's true. Courtney Mosley uh, led the lines uh, with the team high 14 points, while DeMonte Brown came off the bench to score 12 points, including two big three-pointers. As a zone that college Idaho – I would have made anybody that's a fan of the Syracuse always been proud. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to go through the middle. Uh, they figured it out and passed the wide open people in those deep corners and they hit those three. Uh, and then when necessary, they would take the shots from that middle of the zone and they hit some big ones while they missed a couple of the fact that they were uh, doing it. They had a big man, seven footer. They gave him some problems early when they were trying to take it to the rack. They would get blocks. And again, they kind of figured things out and their defense kept them in the game, uh, not allowing Idaho to get more than five-point lead in that matchup, Charles. It does make me curious because you you, you don't see a lot of teams. Uh, you mentioned Syracuse, but this matchup zone uh, that, that, that was basically had a defensive stalemate uh, for a second or two uh, with, in regards to the game. But you don't see a lot of teams doing that, uh, uh, you know, in, in total, especially uh, watching basketball this past weekend. But I was just a little bit curious as to why why you don't see more teams, force teams, try to make some perimeter jump shot. I think one of the things that I heard in one that certainly made Syracuse uh, zone so special was the height they played it with. Mm -hmm. So you want a little height to really be effective so folks cannot quite see as easily over the zone and pass through it as much as possible. So 
while in the NIA, I'm sure that you don't necessarily have a lot of height across the board, but they had that height that kind of anchored the system in the center, which helped them out in terms of, of making it real difficult. So I think that's one of the reasons. And you really have to have some folks that are disciplined and like to play that and really understand how to move with one another versus most uh, young people grow up and they play, you know, two, three zone, those kind of things, but they tend to play a lot more man to man. So you're, right. you're really hoping folks have, will be able to adjust to that new program. So I think that's part of it. And so I think coaching it is a little more challenging than people want. I did want to get into this before we get into some of poll rankings. Not a lot of changes there, but it's solidifying. We do have some updates, obviously, with the win total. So we'll go through that uh, just for the framework. But we have a, another championship. This one's at the Division One level, the CIT, College Insider Tournament Championship. Norfolk State will host. They were the number one seed. They had a bye. They had a big win over Alabama a and I watched that game. It was uh, entertaining there. a and actually led the game at half. Um, and then in the second half, Norfolk State Spartans do what they do, uh, at least what we've seen over the years, and, and really uh, came in the second half with a little more defensive uh, intensity, and we're able to get it going offensively. Good crowd was there uh, in Eccles Memorial Hall, as you know, that uh, is legendary in terms of really turning on Spartans. So the fact they get this home contest and they got the break. Purdue Fort Wayne, I think they play Tarleton State, which those that recall, we talked about the first matchup uh, opening round, they actually played Texas Southern. It's Texas Southern traveled to Tarleton. So they had made it to the semifinals. Uh, for that run and face Purdue, and they had Purdue Fort Wayne that's 23 and 12, 11 and 9 as they came out of Horizon. They got a big win, late win, uh, late in that game to get it done. Or Norfolk State would have likely been on the road uh, for this championship game against Tarleton. But the fact is, Purdue Fort Wayne got it done. Uh, one point, I think it's like 81, 80, 82, 81, something like that in that matchup. Uh, as Spartans get it done, taking down Alabama a and with the final score eighty-one sixty-six. Uh, that game was Saturday. That was the John McClendon class to clinch the first ever appearance in the CIT title game. So big matchups, another championship on the line. Uh, this is one of the things I like. I like when you play for championships. A lot of people will talk about the NCAA or NIT is uh, whether men's or women's, but the NCAA men's is the only one that has the payday. But I think when you're in the business of playing basketball and you get a chance to obviously give some young people an opportunity to continue to play, young freshmen and sophomore, another year in your system, seniors to kind of send them out the right way. I like the fact that coaches and programs decide if they do not make the NCAA that they find a way to go into other tournaments. I think it's good for the program, good for marketing. And any time you have a championship, you'll do that. Uh, we might have a chance to play a video later, but if we don't, you've seen that a little bit with North Carolina a t giving them a shout out as they won their matchup and going into the third round as they play later this week. Unfortunately, Grambling lost last night. Uh, we had a chance to maybe see them to be able to go to a Final Four, if you would, for the NIT. We were looking forward to that matchup, but it will not be in terms of a quarterfinal matchup. You would have seen them two face up, but a t Survives and lives on. So fascinating there. Any final comments you want to talk about any of those championships or uh, the framework of playing in big time games? I, I, I think, uh, and you touched on it, a uh, great crowd in, in Eccles. And we saw a great cat crowd, of course, with North Carolina a t But kudos to these programs making deep runs uh, into uh, postseason uh, basketball. Uh, and we, you know, we're uh, going into late March. We're still talking HBCU hoops, so that that is that is significant. Good thing. That's Good very point. significant. And uh, and like I said, uh, and I do, I want to allow the crowds that have come out to watch these home games. Uh, we talked a little bit about the, kind of the regionality uh, of of uh, basketball on the East Coast uh, or football in the South, but uh, that's important. Well, we see these sort of. Uh, home crowds turn out for these teams and, and provide that 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 six man, if you will. So I, I love seeing that. I love seeing these uh, packed gymnasiums for postseason ball. So Langston will play, face free Hardman for the NIA National Championship. That is 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. That is tonight. It will be on ESPN 3 and I believe ESPN 2 as well. Again, the Lions can become the first HBCU to claim 
NAIA title since 1977. That was Texas Southern with our very own Coach Bob Marlin, uh that did that and got it done out of Mississippi. Uh, <laughs> with, yes, uh, he I'll is. Say, <laughs> that. Uh, the championship game for Norfolk State is tomorrow night, and that is Wednesday. That game will also uh, be broadcast on ESPN uh, 3. So check it out. Keep your eyes on what that looks like in terms of some information there. The game uh, will be tomorrow night with um, the face-off there. So with that being said, let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side and get into some of these poll rankings and see what Charles thinks of these basketballs. We're starting to come. Uh, probably some obvious champions out there, but we'll go through the process until we get to the finality, Till basketball season is over for every basketball program. Mm-hmm. We'll keep it running. Like you said, this is the latest I've had, this poll rankings, because we got past the first weekend and have some Kings playing, which is a good thing for HBCU basketball, HBCU sports. With that, we'll come back on the other side and get into it, mid-major division style. We'll get into women's first, and we'll keep it marching. Stick with us. Be right back after this break. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gush is 90% faster absorbs even more so you can feel dry and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a law, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention as he's going to teach a lesson. This is Dr. Wills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Coach Jimmy out there saying, man, a little too much work, a little too much work to do that zone. I understand, <laughs> appreciate the challenge. And I tried to say it, <laughs> Professor Jimmy, as they say out there since he's coaching and teaching. Uh, with that being said, I just didn't want to throw him under the bus like uh, Coach did. Uh, let's go through the top five. Nobody dropped out, and we'll get through this pretty quickly. Games are not played. This at the mid-major women's level. The seasons are complete uh, uh, for the women. When you look at it, uh, let's look at those top two receiving votes. That's Virginia State, Lady Trojans, 23-5. and five. Man, a significant season to be held there. Savannah State Tigers, 20-6 and six in terms of what this looks like. Um, let me give you a couple of more, just give you the, the next three or the final 10, if you would, that were receiving votes. That was Kentucky State Thoroughbreds, 21 and 7. Fist Bulldogs were 20 and 10. The Landon Smith Panthers, 23 and 7. Let's get in the top five. At number five were the Miles Lady Golden Bears, 23 and 7, 15 and 4. At number five and number four, you have the Xavier Louisiana Gold Nuggets, 25 and 7. At number three, Langston Lions, 24 and 8. At number uh, two, you have Rust Lady Bearcats, 28 and 4. And you had the Fayetteville State Lady Broncos at uh, 29 and 3 as they lost uh, 
that Tuesday, and we had already had the poll ready for exit. So we'll give you that update. So their program record does update to 29 and 3. Fayetteville State, NCAA Division II, Russ Lady Bearcats, NAIA, Langston Lions, NAIA, Xavier Golden Nuggets, NAIA, Miles Lady Golden Bears. Um, you talk about the push they had, getting it done in terms of those tournaments. Virginia State Trojans did not make the tournament. Savannah State did not make the tournament. Kentucky State did not make the tournament. Mm. Uh, Fist Bulldogs uh, got in there for Lana Smith. So you have some teams there that you could have a postseason HBCU tournament, uh, particularly with these 20 wins. Even this four uh, might be tough to get eight, but you can imagine this happening particularly if you go a little NAIA like you do for baseball, NCAA Division II, that championship out there. What are your thoughts, since the poll is kind of staying the same, so you can give some thoughts on that. I wanted to kind of get this in you. What would your thoughts be in terms of HBCU postseason tournament for those students, those teams that didn't make NIA or NCAA tournament? Well, well yeah. That's what I was thinking as I was looking at the, the final poll rankings. And I was thinking to myself, wow, wouldn't it be fun uh, to see these teams in the postseason uh, uh, tournament play each other, uh, sort of recreating uh, that, uh, that, 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 that NAIA uh, district uh, uh, from, from back of, of days of yore, uh, if you will. And how much fun would that be? But, you know, just looking at, and you know, all these teams with 20-plus victories, and then you have Fayetteville and, and, and Russ, Fayetteville State and Russ, uh, both right there at the cusp of 30 wins. And, you know, 30 wins, that's that that's that high watermark. That's that um, magical, <laughs> you know, uh, you, you know you got a, a serious team when you're up close to uh, 30 wins or over 30 wins. So, uh, you know, that, that just kind of stands out uh, that you had these two teams that were right there in that 30, 30 win mark. So it was a, a huge year for uh, mid-majors in regards to uh, on the women's side. So it was fun to watch this past season. A lot of great basketball that was being played. Yeah, you're talking about impressive. Uh, you're talking about a handful of losses. Fayetteville State Lady Broncos with just three. Russ Lady Bearcats at four. You're talking about not having a, you know, knowing what it feels like uh, to lose. Even Virginia State, 23 and five. They only had five. But yeah, Virginia State Lady Trojans. The Kentucky State Thoroughbred. That would have been an interesting championship mix for a yeah. tournament championship. I'd, I'd like to see that take place. But that being I would have said, that let's take a next break. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. right there. Oh, yeah. There's a place to be. Uh, mm -hmm. I certainly would have been not watching if I couldn't have gotten there um, to watch it in person. Let's take our next break. We'll come back on the other side and get into the mid major for the men and tell you. Uh, what's taking place there. That is not done. All the teams are out of playing except for one. We know who that was, and they will have their final game tonight. We'll see if that means holding up a trophy or not. That being said, stay with us as we come back on the other side. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCS 10 Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton, Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. 
Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a law, yeah, and who the fuck, who the fuck. So listen to Professor Yessa yes, and pay attention to why he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Wills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into the poll rankings this week. Week number 12 for the mid major division of the men. All teams have concluded a season except for one. Imagine they are number one, but let's get into it. No one dropped out. Poll rankings stayed the same, but let me give you the top five. Outside of those last two that are standing at uh, receiving votes, two Blue Bulldogs, 23 and 7, 15 and 3. Benedict Tigers, 23 and 8, 15 and 6. Uh, the next three, just to give you those teams, yeah, Benedict Tigers, 23 and 8. Texas College Steers, 22 and 9. Morehouse Maroon Tigers, 20 and 10. Xavier Gold Rush, 22 and 7. Uh, even Talladega had 22 wins. Just to give you all those teams that had 22 wins on the men's side. And obviously, Pink Lincoln, Pennsylvania, coming out of the CIAA, did not win 20 wins, but they won the CIAA tournament. So they got a trophy for sure. Let's get in the top five rankings where it really gets solid. Philander Smith, Panthers, 21 and 9, 14 and 4 in the conference race. Florida Memorial, and these are all championship teams. For the most mm-hmm. part, whether it was division or a conference championship, Florida Memorial Lions 21 and 9, 14 and 4, or tournament championship, I say as well. Miles Golden Bears 22 and 7, 15 and 4 at 3. At number two, Clark Atlanta Panthers 25 and 6, 16 and 5, having one of their best seasons in a while, getting it done. And number one, Langston Lions, as they had and yesterday improved their record to 34 and 1, 21 and 1. Charles, you asked the question, who was the last team or the team that beat the Lions? It was University of Arkansas at Monticello, and mm. it was a three-point victory. Credit to Monticello. They cracked the code that day. They cracked the code, uh, yeah. And it was on the road, 64-67. to 67. Um, That was December 4th. On Monday, on those Mondays, Saturday, Monday, mm. <laughs> on the I road, wonder, always wonder- tricky. Even I for the great championship team. <laughs> I wonder if it was an alpha on that team. It got hot on the summer four. Uh, you got to believe. It. You got to believe. It. <laughs> uh, with that being, <laughs> being said, Charles, what are your thoughts on the poll rankings, lengths, the lines? And obviously, you can give a little nod and shout out for the game tonight uh, yeah. in terms of lengths and lines as they have a chance to bring home a championship. Yeah, bring home a championship. You're looking at an opportunity for history. Uh, 35 wins. Uh, that's, that's amazing to even say. Uh, which which is on the line tonight for Langston. Uh, and we'll see if uh, Cortez Mosley, uh, if he can go off tonight and, and get into that 20-point uh, scoring range for Langston tonight. Uh, and and let's see what that defense does. I think that's one of been, been something they can hang their hat on uh, going through this tournament, uh, the fact that they can lock you down for uh, extended periods. Uh, I think this past game was the only game where they weren't up at some point by 20-some-odd 20, 20 points. So uh, I think – you're going to have to hang your hat again on defense again tonight for Langston. And uh, history's on the line. Looking forward to it. Whoever wins this game will have two victories over number one seeds. All number one seeds made to the Fab Four, as they say, at the NIA in each division. Grace, that was number one team pretty much all season long. They lost to Freeman to let you know how talented they were. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, Langston defeating Idaho, College of Idaho, that won the NIA championship last year. To give you some indication just how big this game is tonight. You're talking about top teams, top four teams ranked uh, throughout the season that are playing some good basketball. One other thing before we go to our next break and come back on the major side for the men and women, we'll start with the women, is shout out uh, on Facebook, Michael Stewart, uh, with the win tonight. We talked about 1977, but he said Langston University with the win tonight can join two historic clubs. 
HBCUs with NAIA men's basketball national titles. And Tennessee State that we a lot as they were first program out there to win three straight. That was even before UCLA had their run in the NCAA. Uh, Tennessee State with three championships. That was 57, 58, and 59. John McClendon, we talked about that game with Norfolk State, giving that historical context out there. Kentucky State, they did the three-peat as well. They did it in 70, 71, and 72. Central State of Ohio, shout out to former Dean Cummings. They played on the team before they made that run at the national championship and actually recruited uh, some of those players that played on that type team. They won the championship in 65 and came back and got it again in 1968. Gremlin, uh, as we talked about Gremlin cutting down the nets with NCA, we made sure everybody understood that they got a NAIA championship, legendary uh, uh, players that played on that team uh, mm -hmm. in 1961, getting it done. In Prairie View, uh, talking about the SWAT dominating, comes back the year later in 1962 and won the championship. Prairie View won the regular season championship in 61. Grandma was right behind them, and then they win the championship. Prairie View gets it done and wins the SWAT championship in 62 and cuts down the nets. Talking about some history there. And then obviously Texas Southern in 1977. Texas Southern played for the first um, B, uh, segregated national championship, lost to McNeese State uh, in that championship and comes back full circle, different coach many years later. That was in the 50s as you desegregate the NAI and get it done. But also in terms of coming from Oklahoma, they become an Oklahoma school with NAI men's national championship at Oklahoma City. They won six of them. 91, 92, 94, 96, 2007, 2008, kind of let you know the run they had. Oklahoma Baptist with two, 66 and 10. Cameron University with one in 1980. Southern Nazarene with one in 1981. Science of Art, USAO now, one in 2002. And Mid-American Christian won in 2016. Didn't realize NIA was flooded, obviously, in Oklahoma, but how well they play basketball. Langston can join that club in terms of the state of Oklahoma. So they have two historic opportunities they can make with history tonight. With that being said, let's take our next break. We'll come back on the other side, get in the major division for the women. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot -E -E com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. Come on, him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www dot slowburnwaco.com compress the analytic data with your hip hop if you know them like I know them they gon' tell you if your team if they want a lot yeah and who the ball who the ball so listen to professor yes sir yes sir and pay attention cause he gon' teach a lesson 
This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into the women's major division poll rankings as we have some updates of what took place from last week. Teams got into the NCAA or uh, WNIT. We do have one team that continues to play. Uh, when this ranking came out, we still had two teams that were playing, so we'll give you those updates as they come up as well. Uh, no team dropped out. Top five teams are solid. They're locked in for this year, I believe it is. Uh, those receiving votes, though, you had Howard Bison, 15 and 6, 10 and 4, played that great game against Norfolk State in the uh, MEAC championship game there in that tournament. You had North Carolina Central Eagles that have really improved their stock in terms of making a statement on this season. It's a team on the rise, I would say. Charles, one that you want to keep your eyes on at 16 and 15, had a winning season, very solid uh, for where that program was just a couple of years ago, nine and five in conference race. Let's get into the top five. UAPB, Golden Lions, 17 and six, 11 and five. Uh, certainly a solid season, got a winning record uh, in terms of what took place there. It kind of faltered at the end, but very strong overall. North Carolina T, four. North Carolina A&T State Aggies, 22 and 11, 13 and 5. Be interesting to see whether they find a way to jump over Grambling as they continue to win. They had two big wins and their season continues. They're 22 and 11, 13 and 5. They're in the women's NIT. Talking about the women's NIT, you have Grambling State. When this poll was released uh, yesterday, uh, they had the win in the WNIT tournament, 23-9. and nine. Since then, we know that they have lost 15-3, so they will fall to 23-10 and 10, uh, as we get into things next week. Uh, but you have Norfolk State Spartans that went into the NCAA uh, women's tournament. They fall 27-6, 13-1, great season, one loss, seven three points. And Jackson State Tigers, 26-7 and seven as they end their season with a loss against UConn. And we saw what Becker did. For those that are kind of focused on the women's tournament just as much as the men, she made a statement in terms of where she was as a freshman. Kudos to her. I bring that all up to let you know, even as a three seed, how tough it is in the women's uh, seeding. That's 16, 15, and 14. <laughs> and number one uh, tournament game over the last 10 years. So you got to find a way to get in that 12, 11 spot. But Jackson State, if they continue to you do what they do, um, and play at this high level, it wouldn't surprise me if they start to inch and find a way to get to that 12-11 spot as they continue to push the envelope. It's something about the consistently finding a way to get in the tournaments, even though last year, obviously, they had the upset in the tournament, couldn't get in. But people look at the season and also the body work. No, they're not supposed to do that, but you know that's just habit and the way things go. So I thought that was important to point that out in terms of the trajectory of where these programs are. But great season on the women's side. But I want to know what you think, Charles. Um, you know, I, 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 as I take a look at these programs in the top five, UAPB, North Carolina, a and Grandma State, Norfolk State, and Jackson State, and I think coaches touched on it uh, in the uh, in the, in their press conferences, especially during the tournament, uh, is being able to kind of uh, uh, retain uh, some of these players. Uh, and I think that's, that's something that you kind of – Saw sort of a blueprint with Jackson State uh, in terms of keeping a core group together. Because Shauna Luckett uh, was uh, was been in Jackson State's program for forever. Uh, graduate students past year provided that veteran leadership at point guard. Tian Bowler, uh, Maya Crump. Uh, you had a lot of those core pieces that stayed together, uh, and those teams that are on the come up. Uh, Grandma, uh, Grandma State. Uh, can they keep some of those core pieces together uh, as well as adding? Uh, some height uh, that we see is uh, uh, tremendously important, especially once you get in a tournament play and, and, and postseason play. Uh, UAPB, I think that was a coup uh, to keep Zay Green. Zay Green said she's going to come back. So to see uh, what, what Don Thornton can add to those pieces around UAPB. So we're in unpre unprecedented times in terms of looking at the women's side uh, of the ledger. Uh, I, you can make a hard case. The, the stars over there uh, in, in the, on the women's uh and in the women's tournament and the SWAC and the MEAC and the CAA, they definitely have stars within their program. So trying to see can you retain some of those stars to play in the conference, that's going to be huge going forward. You look at all those teams, Jack State, Norfolk State, <clears throat> Grambling State, North Carolina a and uh, UAPV, one of the things they were able to do this year was keep a lot of those players together, add a couple of pieces, uh, mm -hmm. and look what type of season they had. Many of them championship seasons 
if not championship level type of seasons, postseason participation and things of that nature uh, rising to the occasion. But uh, with the transfer portal, it becomes even more challenging in regards to keeping players, but it does open up, meaning that you have an opportunity to bring players in. And players tend to want to play for winning programs. And so and when you're up there and you're playing for uh, chances to play in the tournament and do something special, do something that never has been done, it gives you an impetus to be able to recruit a certain type of player that says, I want to do something different. And so it'll be interesting, as you said, to see what it means to keep pushing the envelope and getting stuff done. But uh, kudos for HBCU basketball this year. Yeah. You said it, and I must say it again, mid-major level or major division level, it's been a fascinating season. Let's take our next break and talking about a fascinating season. We'll go to the men's side and see what your thoughts are there as we get it done on the other side. Let's take our uh, next break, come back, and talk about the men's in the major division. Paul Reigns. We- Itchy. Squirmy. Scratchy. Family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit THamptonLaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire. 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. THamptonLaw.com. No. No. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Impress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike is out on assignment. We have none other than Charles Bishop. Let's get into the poll ranking here. We did have some changes this week in the men, so it's a little more interesting than the other three. Um, so we'll just get into it and see what you think there. Uh, dropping out this week actually was Texas Southern Tigers, 16 and 7, 12 and 6 overall uh, as they dropped out. You see. Uh, you have Tennessee State receiving votes. It should have actually been Texas Southern Tigers at 16 and 7 as they had their loss in the CIT against Tarleton State that we talked about early. Also mm. receiving votes with Southern Jaguars 18 and 14, 12 and 6, uh, 39 points there. Let's get in the top five programs in the rankings. 
uh, this week and let you know what's taking place. At number five, you have none other than Tennessee State Tigers at five. They jumped back in the pole. Really, if you think about the holistic part of the season, they finished at 18 and 15, didn't close the way they wanted. They dropped them out last week when Tennessee. Texas Southern it got hot in the tournament and closed up, but uh, th- what a week uh, difference a week makes as they jump in the top five, 18 and 15, 10 and 8 out of the OVC with 41 points. At number four, North Carolina Central Eagles, 18 and 13, 9 and 5, 51 points. As they move up a spot uh, with Texas Southern dropping out, they get uh, moved up as they close out in the season uh, with 18 wins. Uh, at number three, Howard Bison, 18 to 17, 9 and 5. Obviously, a tough loss in the first four of the NCAA tournament, but they make the run in the MIAC and add another trophy to the trophy case as Howard Bison, the Howard University, has become a basketball program, both on the men's and women's side. Some people would say all sports trophy may be in their way, the way they have been turning around their program overall, 18 and 17, 9 and 5. Uh, good. Life is good at the Mecca, 52 points as they move up a slot from being four last week. And number two, Norfolk State Spartans with the win over Alabama AM, HBCU program, 23 and 11, 11 and 3. Four first place votes, 102 points. They rank number two. This is a program that won the regular season, uh, didn't get it done in the tournament, lost to Howard as Howard cuts down in the championship. Obviously, Howard. Uh, play Delaware State in that championship game, get it done in terms of what it looks like there. Um, another thing about Norfolk State in terms of the Spartans, we say they play for a championship CIT. should be interesting to see what that looks like as they move forward. And number one, Gravel State Tigers, 21-15, and 14-4, and four, seven first place votes, 105 points. So you see this week, uh, Norfolk State added a first place vote. <laughs> Shift it away. Shift it away. <laughs> Grandma State had the regular season championship, a tournament championship, went to the NCA first four and got a big win in overtime. So they sit at the Ooh. top, but they do have that loss in the next game. Norfolk State didn't have the tournament championship, have a regular season championship, better overall record, 23. Loss. Norfolk State ended up evening the MEAC SWAC matchup as they got it done that. Uh, Swack was leading three to two in five games that were played in non-conference play, if you would. You get a postseason matchup between Alabama a and a team that was hot, middle of the pack for the Swack. Make sure we point that out. But did get the win over Austin A on the road. They go on the road to Norfolk State. Beat them at halftime. Norfolk State closes it, gets it done. So you have a 3-3 series there. Both of them had winning records over their HBCU programs with wins over Tennessee State by Alabama A&M. Speak about them. You also had wins uh, with Norfolk State over Howard, uh, Hampton in terms of some of those mixes in the mix. And so both of them have winning records uh, when you have Central winning over a t So fascinating to see what that looks like non-conference. But my question to you, Charles, is I kind of <laughs> long gave this out, get you smiling, maybe lather you up, all the listeners out there. If Norfolk State gets it done tomorrow, wins the CIT championship, can they pull away two votes? They need to get two more. They pulled away one this week. Can they pull away two more votes, which would put them over Gramlin, because that means they've taken them from Gramlin. So Mm. Gramlin goes to five first-place votes there in terms of two. And then Norfolk State goes to six. So overall point differential, you probably would see Norfolk State taking over Bramlin. What are your thoughts? Is that possible? Is that feasible? Would you agree or disagree? Uh, if you were a voter, what would you do? Uh, I put some stock in the public. <laughs> put it I, on put the some, yeah, I know. Because <laughs> I, 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 that's tough. That's tough. I, I do put some stock <laughs> into uh, the opportunity to, to hang a postseason championship banner. And that's what's on the line here for Norfolk State. Uh, say what you want, you know, how you feel about the CBI, CIT. That's that's brand recognition for a basketball program to me. I mean, when you take a look at the fact that they they have an opportunity to do something historic here. Uh, and you know, they, can they pull away two first-place votes from Grambling? Oh, boy, that's hard because 
regular season championship, swag tournament championship. They're 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 in the the the, the mystique of March Madness. Uh, they get a, a play a play in victory or or, or uh, get a victory in the tournament. That 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 goes a long way. But I still got a team playing now. I can't overlook that. I really can't overlook that. So, is it possible? Is it possible, Doctor Cavill, to have a split national championship in terms of uh, Doctor Cavill's final ranking? Have we ever? I'm seen not sure it? how you would split it up. You would need. You've seen it before. Football side, we see the split. Yeah. Championship. You have the same number of voters. The challenge you have here is you have 11 overall voters. So you would need to get some really intriguing math with Howard following some spots. So it would work out that one may have more first place votes, but they would get points based on being ranked lower somewhere in the poll rankings, which I think would be a challenge this late in the season. But feasibly uh, with the math, I guess I got to say it is possible, but I doubt it in terms of the point rankings here that that would take place. Interesting when you uh, think about that. And you said hanging banners. A couple of years ago, we followed Texas Southern in Hampton as they made yeah. final four runs in the CIT uh, in terms of that. So let you know uh, that programs, HBC programs, have made some runs here. Uh, but to get to the championship game, we haven't seen that in this young CIT uh, tournament, if you would. So it's fascinating to see that that's in place now. You never had a team that come in with the number one seed. So they got the bye. Uh, so – in fact, they're only playing two games. That may bother some voters out there. Uh, but with that being said, let me go with the lab listeners. What do you think in terms of that? Legendary joiner with Hampton uh, made their run. He retires this year. And then uh, you see uh, now Norfolk State has a chance to play for the championship CIT tournament. Fascinating to see what that looks like and see what people think. I want to know during this break, let me know. Uh, would you support Norfolk State in regards to them? Uh, how would you vote in the poll rankings? Where would you go? Would you have Grambling State number one in terms of what they did with the body of the season and the late season run? Or Norfolk State, who would you have in terms of championship? And we got followers out there from Grambling. We got followers oh, out there from uh, Norfolk State. So I know where go. they're going to vote. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Here we so go. I'm, just, I'm just fascinated and interested. I want to see what the people think. With that being said, let's take a last break. We'll come back with the other side. Let Charles – do his thing, ask the question of the day. Many people have enjoyed that, so we'll keep that going. But that means, you say, let's take our last break, come back on the other side. I want to see what some of the people type as we are taking our break. Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to look down and see what you're saying uh, in the lab. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gush is 90% faster absorbs even more so you can feel dry and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. 
Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Press the analytic data with the hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love, yeah. And who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, why is he gon' teach a lesson? Yeah. This is Dr. Dills inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Professor Bishop, go ahead and go away, ask your question of the day. Yeah, well, the last discussion we were having was a perfect segue uh, into the question of the day in terms of uh, how much relevance uh, do we put on uh, tournaments other than uh, the NCAA uh, tournament, uh, looking at the CBI, the CIT. Uh, we're seeing our HBC teams making deep runs into these tournaments. Uh, so the question becomes, uh, are these tournaments, how, how relevant are they uh, in terms of the psyche of our HBC family? Great question there. I'm going to say this before I give a full framework of the discussion. Let's play this video. Seven seconds, back to Davis. Five seconds, Tucker, kick out. Brooke home for the win from long distance. From long distance. Malia Brooke home knocks it down. Dr. Ville's inside HBC Sports Lab. Charles, I think that's evident. As you've seen a packed Corbett arena and you saw the fans that were there, it's mostly students, how engaged they were. And for folks that don't know, that was the WNIT. A&T uh, won their second round game. And as we said earlier in the poll rankings, they will continue to play. And so I think that's evidence uh, that if you're in the basketball business and you're talking about growing your fan base, what you start to understand is the importance, how fans love the camaraderie, the family that we talk about that's unique to HBCUs, general and sports fandom, uh, as you talk about, and how people celebrate victories. People don't necessarily know the nuance in regards of the value. Obviously, NCAA is in your face all the time, the March Madness tournament. Uh, but at the end of the day, the value of, of winning championships at various levels um, or in various tournaments outweighs the fact that you shouldn't play in it in terms of understanding what that means. Now, all of those fans that were connected, they're going to remember uh, that they were in the building when a t had a dramatic win in a postseason event. Mm. Um, and people are not going to worry about that much about whether it's WNIT, NCAA. Uh, those for the general fan base is not something they really recognize, CIT, CBI. But they do understand the value of how they felt and how they can tell other fans that I was there. I was on the sideline. That's me jumping on. There. I was on TV celebrating that our women got it done. So I think it is immeasurable when you're understanding marketing and creating the brand recognition of taking advantage when your teams go to these tournaments and celebrating what that looks like. So the back end question to that is, and, and, I'm, and I know every team has a unique situation in regards to uh, whether they should accept a uh, postseason invite to play into uh, these uh, tournaments. Uh, but what you're basically saying is uh, the brand value to the, to the school is, is too great an opportunity to not or to decline an invitation into the WNIT, into the NIT, into the CBI, CIT. Right. So I think you reframe it. A lot of times coaches – put everything on the fact that you're going to look at winning a regular season championship. Then obviously it's about the postseason tournament. And so if you do not win those, a lot of times people see it as a loss. I think you reframe and say here at this program, we chase championships. Mm. We chase championships, postseason participation. So whether this is a regular season championship, tournament championship, NCAA, Division One, Division Two, NIA Championship, CBI, CIT, WNIT, NIT, WCBI. I don't care what you call it, HBCU tournament. We chase championships. So we connect winning with our pedigree of a program in terms of the brand recognition of postseason participation. 
So we're going to always look to participate. So you plan at the beginning of the season and budget to the fact that we're going to look at postseason reward you for a great season. And not only we're going to reward our players, we're going to reward our fans, and we're going to do as much as possible to get home games mm. so we can reward our fans for a great regular season. We can reward our fans for a um, and players for a great – reward our coaches for a great season. And we do not measure just greatness by the fact of whether you win a championship. The fact that you had uh, 20 wins or winning record on your way to chasing those championships are just as important because now it prepares you for the next year as you roll over and you start brand marking that this is another season and the continuation of our great program continues in terms of we chasing championships at various years, whether it was NIA championships in the 50s, 60s, 70s, NIA, NCAA championship division twos, in the 70s and the 80s, or whether that is Division One championships in terms of conference, regular seasons, or postseason wins in the NCAA tournament at the Division One level. Men's and women's, we chase championships. That's important. That's important to hear, and that's uh, important for programs to hear, uh, especially uh, when you talk about the retention of athletes and things of that nature, uh, that you have that tagline that they understand that, you know, this is, we're a cut above. We chase championships. I love that. Yeah, and if you think about it, you really can do that in multiple sports. So you find a way uh, to brand yourself where you are. Sometimes if you're not careful and you're always looking to the nexus uh, of comparing yourself to everybody else, sometimes you need to start for your greatness of where you are. And then you build upon that to the next level in terms of moving further and you find ways to further support yourself in that mechanism. So I thank you for that question because I think contextually at this time right now, it's really timely and important. And hopefully that video connect with the fans out there and understanding what we're saying. With that being said, let's close it up so we can get into this NAIA championship game with Langston. Uh, thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Again, I want to thank you for listening, Dr. Bills, inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Every Tuesday, Thursday, right here at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time, we look forward to Thursday as we give you the latest news and we'll give you an update of who cut down those nets. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, of X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Facebook. Uh, and YouTube inside the HBC Sports Lab. On Thursday, we'll get a little ping of the bats. Baseball. Texas South took two out of three from Prairie View, putting up 13 runs in game three uh, <laughs> to the Diamondbacks to get down there. Jackson State is hot. They took two the first weekend from Alabama State, following up, bringing out the brooms. Uh, but Dude Cookman took two out of three from Fam U. Just yeah. Just kind of see it. Grambling is undefeated. Man, baseball is being played. It's time to get on the dime. And let's not miss out softball is yeah. uh, the ladies out there doing their things as well. What would yeah, you big, say, Carl? Big weekend series as the G Men. They come to Houston uh, over uh, Easter weekend. So I'm expecting McGregor to be packed this weekend. So looking forward to it. And they start early. That's on Thursday for everybody in this area that you don't know. You've probably seen that before. Easter weekend, no Sunday games, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Fascinating to be out there at McGregor Park. Uh, with that being said, dream big. Until you move forward, we will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Roy? Lecture. Dismissed.